Hey everybody, this is Jim Nave from Jim Nave Woodworks. Um, tonight I just finished uh, redesigning and building my third iteration of my laser mount. Um, just wanted to show it to everybody that in case they, it gives them some ideas on, on how they might want to mount theirs. Um, I learned two things in my recent work with rastering. Uh, the ESS plugin recently enabled uh, picture rastering and in that process uh, one thing I, I learned is that, that software only lets you raster in the x-axis and so you want your laser beam which is not symmetrical on a diode laser it's kind of a long line I mean, in my case it's it's eight thousandths of an inch in in this direction and it's two thousandths of an inch in this direction and so you want that long axis kind of fa uh, in going perpendicular to the direction of rastering um, you get the, the nicest symmetrical pixels that way because the laser fires at the beginning and the end of the pixel and that gives you the most uh, symmetrical window because it doesn't have that extra wide piece on each end of the pixel. Uh, anyway, I'll explain that more in a focusing video that I'm working on that's coming up. But the bottom line is I needed to mount my laser. It used to be oriented this way, and it, which is fine for cutting and, and doing... Uh, vector burning but to do rastering I really needed to orient it this way so I took the mount and I turned it 90 degrees and bolted it on here and that solves that problem and then the other thing that I learned is with things like paper and wood you really want a very very low airflow coming out of the uh, air assist on the laser um, with with two just even barely too much airflow you, you start to blow the soot down especially on like white paper like I have here um, when you're lasering it it kind of makes it sooty and dirty and so you get the cleanest picture if you don't have any airflow at all but the problem with that is then you don't keep particles you know dust and soot and stuff out of your lens area inside there and, and you definitely don't want that you got to keep those lenses clean so I added this flow meter which goes down to a couple liters a minute which is very low so I can really dial this in now. Um, the reason it was difficult before was I was using a just a, a regular like quarter turn valve on that and with the fan running on the laser I couldn't hear the airflow and the, the airflow coming from the fan that cools the, the laser kind of disturbed the air down here and I couldn't feel the airflow either so between hearing it and, and feeling it. Um, I couldn't really tell how much I had it on or not with this other kind of valve. So now with this, I can visually see that I have airflow and how much. And I actually get a a number, uh, you know, that's uh, that I can repeat uh, easily. Whereas, you know, by sound or feel, you're not very accurate. Um, so this gives lets me dial that in. So that was the two things. I added the flow meter and turned this 90 degrees. The other thing. Um, is I, so I moved my mist system to the inside here. So when I'm uh, cutting with the router, I have my magnetic base here and I just remove my laser. Uh, I put my, this is just a protective dust cover to cover up the electronics, but it also doubles as another air nozzle because the air that comes through to my laser comes back into my base and out this. So I put that on and now I've got air, I've got high air flow uh, for cutting wood and things like that where I just want to blow chips in so the vacuum can take it out and then I can put that out of the way use my mist system when I'm cutting metal so this blows aluminum and, um, or, or when I'm cutting aluminum blows uh, I use uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol um, and it's got a little venturi and it sucks it out of my container but uh, a little air pressure adjust and, and the flow adjusts up here. This doesn't work very good for just simply airflow for blowing chips because it's really designed, it's got another tube inside and so it's got a passage in there to, to carry the fluid and a little bit of air so it, the airflow is kind of weak compared to something like this so that's why I have two of them but this is pretty much mutually exclusive with the laser so that's why I just added it onto that so I don't have so much junk up here all the time when the laser's up there keeps things a little more tidy at least but 
the laser still has this tether, so I have a hole back here that uh, I can put the tether in, into. So now it's a it's breakaway basically. So if I'm using my touch plate and I forget to put the magnet onto the rod here, you know that's how it normally works. But if I forget this, then as you know, it'll come crashing down and, and never stop um, when it's running the um, the touch plate routine. So it's it's breakaway. This will just pop off and and hang there. It won't damage the laser or anything. It gives me time to hit the ammo button. Now one disadvantage with this mount is that the laser is getting pretty far away from the center of the spindle, which means that this 10 or 11 inches is lost Z-axis uh, space as far as usable space. So my machine is four feet by four feet. This really means I can go from the right edge to about you know three feet in. So I, I lost a foot worth of usable space, but Honestly, that's fine for laser work for me. I don't do that big of pieces with the laser. But I also do have a different mount. You've seen it on some of my older videos possibly where it mounts right off the bottom here and, and sits down right below the spindle. That's why I have an extra long Z axis. I have a 12 inch axis on here so I can mount the laser down here. That gives me a full um, four foot of range for cutting and vector use I would you would never raster something that big it wouldn't make any sense but um, so I, I still can do that if I need to but otherwise this is fine in, in the position it's in um, for 99.9% .9 of the other work I do so that's it I just thought I'd put this out there in case people are getting a, a laser in pretty soon and trying to figure out how they want to mount it um, I do have the Vectric files for this base if anybody's interested. A couple of people have asked and I've sent them to them. They can, I've got the parts list for the connectors that I use. But it's basically like, it's very similar to Opt Lasers, small version that they make for their, their littler lasers. They don't have one yet big enough to hold this much weight, so I made my own. Um, it's worked out really well and the, uh, the rod here for, to work for the electronic touch plate has worked out really well too. All right, if you have any questions or want the files, just put some comments or questions down in the comment section below the video, and uh, I will answer you. Thank you.